Hey guys, what's going on? Emo Tempest here today, and we're hitting up the lightning cards. And lightning had a, a really good um, set this time around. Uh, so we're going to go ahead right into it, start with the legendaries and uh, one of the heroes. Uh, four drop Kuja. We talked about this a little bit in the card of the week, but when Kuja enters the field, choose a four. If cost three or less, your opponent controls, break it. Uh, Kuja deals you one point of damage. And then Thundaga S3 Lightning, choose up to two forwards, your opponent controls, deal them 2,000 damage, and then deal 5,000 damage uh, to all the all damage forwards your opponent controls. Uh, so first of all, Kuja entering uh, breaks a forward and then deals you a point of damage. It's not uh, a totally bad effect. The earlier on, the better for this. Obviously, uh, I don't like the idea of being stuck with a card like this at the end of the, like, you know, around late game, six damage or five damage, putting us in dangerous risks. Um, but again, considering we are... Um, playing in a, in a new meta where uh, damage control is going to be important. Um, getting ourselves to 5 or getting ourselves to 3 or even uh, for Aranea, like if you're looking at the, the next card too, getting ourselves to 6 um, uh, and being able to get these effects off is going to be important too. So uh, for that, for those reasons, uh, Kuja seems to be come is going to be coming up a lot, I think. And then his, uh, we already mentioned that his S ability is, is like a baby board wipe, um, but it does facilitate uh, quick damage and like uh, a lot of uh, uh, threatening presence, right? Having that, uh, and it's it's a, it's pretty cheap too, if you ask me, uh, considering some of the other cards that we get. So it's five CP, and then uh, we lightning and uh, a few other elements already have like uh, spells that can finish other things off. So um, it really helps a lot. Uh, now, Aranea is probably one of the better ones as well, too. Uh, for each forward other than Aranea, you control Aranea gains 1,000 power. So off the bat, for um, usually 8, 9, you know, something like that in that range. Um, at 3 damage, when Aranea enters the field, choose a lightning forward of cost 2 or less, and you break some play it onto the field. And at 6 damage, Aranea gains the forwards you control gain haste. So, again, like I was saying, uh, putting us at this 6 damage threshold is something that's like, um, you know, you're backed up into a corner effectively, but... Uh, this card helps you kind of like fight back, uh, and she has a lot of like uh, a lot of really good effects. So she's not going to be super weak uh, if you're at three damage because she'll bring something out, and then at six everything has four uh, has haste. So being able to make a lot of like uh, big turn plays with her end game and stuff like that is going to be really strong. Uh, and then next is Anima, uh, the Falci forward four drop for Mobius and thirteen. I was hoping when I when I first uh, saw this, I don't know. I was thinking I was hoping we would see uh, Anima from ten, but um, maybe we'll get that in another set. Uh, when a forward your opponent controls is put from the field to the break zone, choose a forward your opponent controls, dull it, and then for free for zero CP, choose a forward your opponent controls, deal two thousand. You can only use this ability once per turn. Uh, so the first part is kind of like um, we remember Amon. Amon was such a great card to like dull stuff, right? But now we have uh, now it's a reaction, like uh, it's an auto ability when. Uh, forward your opponent controls is put from the field to the break zone. Choose a forward your opponent controls dull it. So it's a little bit better in that sense where uh, it can't, um, like you don't have to tap out and leave him. So Anima is still able to do stuff. But I think Anima might be like a, a power creep version of Amon if you ask me. Because uh, he also has this free ability to use, uh, to deal 2000 damage. In it. And I know 2000 does damage doesn't seem like a lot initially, right? But um, if you just. Obviously, just at the what we're looking at right now, um, if you pair him with Kuja, it's going to help deal extra damage to stuff. Um, also, realistically, it's uh, free 2k every turn, uh, so you'll always have you'll always be in a range where you can kill stuff uh, for 10k or any other any any higher two two plus higher range than uh, whatever the forwards are. Um, and then there's a lot of effects that uh, that that this facilitates, like uh, only a damaged forward and stuff like that. Um, and like Sakura and like I said, Kuja, for example, Onion Knight, all these little things, right? All these little nuances that you guys are, um, that I'm sure we'll run into. Um, but again, it's free 2000 cons constantly. So dropping anything, you know, any forward, for some reason you have a 2000 <laughs> like power forward. This can literally kill it. Um, if there's any reduction on the field, you know, it's it's just, it's always going to be threatening. So it's, it's scary to leave this guy out for a long time. Uh, next is going to be uh, the Man in Black, Gadgeteer, and Glocka. Um, the Man in Black cannot be played uh, or card named Golbez while already in control of either character. When Man in Black enters the field, choose a Lightning Summon of cost 3 or less in your break zone. You may cast it without paying cost. If you do so, remove that summon from the game after use instead of putting it in the break zone. So 5-9, not bad. Um, and just being able to bring cast a summon um, 
it is a lightning summon though so it is a little limiting but i think lightning has enough decent uh three drop summons that helps you do something you know you can do 7k dull uh, 7k give haste with ramus um and then i believe there's uh the odins or something that breaks three drops uh monsters as well so you have a, you have a couple of options there too uh if you are playing with the other lightning too you know you're throwing odins out and i know there's a three drop odin so um maybe this will go this can do something like that so uh and then i don't know there's a lot of things there but just being able to replay a summon for free is is, is good so he's not just like a 5-9 that does nothing. He does stuff on it, on entry. So uh, Gadgeteer, uh, I, again, we like two drop backups. So uh, for Lightning, you can tap, remove Gadgeteer and one backup from the game. I know it seems pretty expensive, but choose a backup in your break zone. Uh, if it costs equal to the total of the cost of the two cards removed from the from the game, play it on the field. You can use this ability during your turn. So this lets you uh, effectively swap out, uh, break a backup and swap out backups. Uh, so it's very interesting because you'll be able to um, replay certain uh, entry abilities and stuff like that um, and it's not limited to color it's just limited to cost so um, pairing this up with something you know uh, I'm not sure exactly what's the best use of it right now but you know there's gonna be I'm sure there's gonna be combos for this um, and now we have a way to replay like I don't want to say Renoa backups but sort of right like uh, so we're just kind of reborning backups which is good uh, off a of backup so uh, now Glauca is probably one of the more threatening ones too. The cost required to play Lightning Forward onto the field is reduced by one and cannot become zero. Um, so just all the stuff we were talking about, right? Animus three, Ernest three, Kujus three. Uh, some of our other favorite ones are uh, Ilua and uh, Estinian. Like you know, that's a two and a four now. Uh, when Glauca or a forward enters the field, choose a forward. It gains one thousand power until the end of the turn. So you know we can affect. There's a few things here. Just off the top of my head, we can always. Um, just spam two drop hasters or like one drop hasters and stuff and like swing for a lot of game um, which is an interesting idea like for uh, a rush deck um, just build up backups because lightning has that kind of uh, ability to do that and then just drop a glauca and then drop 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 swing 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 you know there's there's a couple things there so um, but overall like uh, cp over time is a reduction if you leave him out you know lightning's going to be getting a lot of important stuff out um that you shouldn't be leaving alive and they'll be getting it faster so it's just uh something to think about but this card is really good uh last few three here just a couple of outliers that i, I liked uh the aldermelk of the rough um it's the summon of the set so e experience choose an active forward deal a 6k um and if your opponent has received five points of damage uh deal at nine thousand instead so nine thousand is is pretty good and again People, I'm telling you, damage control is going to be really threatening, really, really important. It's another mechanic that we're going to have to like overly observe, observe, observe <laughs> excuse me. Um, and so, you know, for for one one k dealing nine, uh, for one drop dealing nine k is very strong. Um, I like this Maya a lot. Um, if you control Job Warrior of Light forward, uh, Job Warrior of Light or Light forward, Maya gains two thousand power. When a light or dark character either player control is put from the field to the break zone, choose a character other light or dark in your break zone and add it to your hand. So, uh, I'm not sure. I was started thinking about a little bit of this, but, um, you know, obviously we can't pitch light and dark characters, but um, I still find, I know I, I always, like, you know, joke about it, but there is, there is, a, there is a deck that we will come to appreciate that is going to be light or dark heavy. And it's cards like these that help facilitate those kind of decks. Um, so uh, this one, I know she's better if you're playing light forwards, right? Because it's Warrior of Light or light forwards, and she doesn't get the buff for dark characters. But um, being able to recur dark characters is very strong. And then also, uh, you know, when one of yours... It's obviously when something leaves the field, but it's it's a little more powerful than, the, than your side. It's a little faster, right? Because it's on either side. If either player loses a forward, a uh, light or dark forward... Um, so that's something to like, and, and I'm not saying that this card is going to exist or something, but maybe changing, like there's going to be a card that changes your opponent's forwards colors, uh, which might be super strong, uh, the more I think about it, but you know, it's just funny, <laughs> but I think, think she's going to see play in the future. Uh, maybe not immediately right now. Cause again, that deck doesn't exist, but, um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Azul, very, very, very good card. Uh, one of our. Uh, it's kind of like a, a reincarnation of one of our old favorites, Dataluma. But uh, when Azul is dealt damage, choose a forward your opponent controls, deal at 1,000. Simple. Uh, and when Azul uh, gain, at 3 damage, gains deal your opponent 2,000 damage. And then 
at five damage deal an additional three damage. So potential six K damage here um, when it is dealt damage. And if I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, it's like three separate like pieces of damage. It's not all at once, so it is three, two, one, and uh, so reducing damage. Like uh, whenever damage is reduced, it, it makes a difference. Um, but it's still a very strong card. A lot of like at five damage, he's a little more powerful than that Luma, right? But it takes time to get there, and uh, you're in a bad spot if you're not ready for this. But He's going to be very strong. Uh, I do believe there's already like lightning wind decks uh, going out there with him. Um, and I'm glad he's lightning and not earth because then we have like another problem. But lightning wind is definitely strong enough. Uh, it's definitely one of the under under appreciated colors that we don't have. So I think this might help that uh, that deck building process a lot. Um, yeah, guys. So those are the, the, the my best uh, nine cards from the lightning set. I think those are the ones that we'll see play probably. Um, and stuff like that. So again, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.